Thank you for joining our Youth Day broadcast this morning. Democrats, as a result of the announcement last night, we have taken the responsible decision to cancel our in-person rally, which was all set up in Mitchell's Plain, Cape Town. And although many young people in the DA wanted to be at the rally, they understood that as a result of national failures, we had to take the responsible decision. Be that as it may, I'm delighted that so many are streaming in and joining this morning because during Youth Month, it is not enough to merely honour the class of 1976, a class of young leaders who paid a great price towards the freedoms we enjoy today. It is incumbent on us to do so much more as the class of 1976 started a countrywide uprising in defiance of a brutal and inhumane system. Young people are crying out for fair opportunities, similar to the years leading up to the 1976 uprising. And in that time, the authorities turned a blind eye. We dare not do so now. In some circles, a certain stereotype exists that young people aren't responsible or that young people have no ambition. But I'm here today to state categorically emphatically and dogmatically that most young people lead responsible lives. All young people have dreams and aspirations. And I'm mesmerized at how young people unify around broadly shared goals, hopes and ideals. The youth of South Africa are genuinely committed and equally impatient to put right the wrongs of our broken society, a society in which the rate of youth unemployment has increased since the last quarter and currently sits at 63.3%. This is an increase of 4.3% year on year. But this is despite the fact that our current generation of young people is the most innovative and digitally savvy generation. So why are we experiencing these high levels of youth unemployment? I could name the inefficiency of the NYDA, which is nowhere to be seen, or because of the continued regulations on the economy without a proper recovery plan, or that the bailing out of state-owned entities that year on year milk the fiscus, like ESCOM, that literally paid 56 rand for a two-litre bottle of milk. State-owned entities like ESCOM per um, uh, procure goods and services at a ridiculous markup compared to normal wholesale or retail prices. And I doubt that there's any young person that will purchase a wooden mop for a staggering 238,000 rand, as ESCOM did, which is 237,900 more than the actual price. Or better yet, a quick search on a wooden mop and you will find one for 49 rand. Or other purchases, young people, that ESCOM did, which spends 140 billion rand procuring goods and services, including the payment of a 28 rand for a roll of single-ply toilet paper. Any person could have at least gotten two two-ply toilet rolls for that price. But I guess that when stuff hits the fan, you probably need toilet paper. Democrats, but here in the Western Cape, we are privileged to have a DA-led city of Cape Town and a DA-led Western Cape government. We do not treat youth policy as a distraction or just a single aspect. We drive youth policy everywhere in the governments where we deliver. That is why the Western Cape's working age population increased by 1.9% in the first quarter of 2021. And this is the largest and now, it, but this is the largest and now stands at the four 0.7 million young people. Democrats, as we commemorate Youth Month, we honor the young people of 1976, and it is apparent that young people are standing up, that young people are being counted, that young people are mobilizing and marching. And one thing is certain, that the DA is the only party that has taken the responsibility to ensure that the hopes of our young people, the dreams of our young people are honored. Democrats, I'm going to introduce the regional chairperson of the Democratic Alliance Youth for the City of Cape Town, Tammy Jackson. But first, the federal leader of the Democratic Alliance Youth, Luyolo Umpiti. Good morning, South Africa. 
I don't think it's by coincidence that we are gathered here today on the day that young people came together and shook the entire country, the entire world, and reminded it of the power of young people. It was in ordinary conversations they decided to take the torch forward. This moment reminds us of the power within us to stand together as South Africans and young people in particular. It forces us to take a hard look at our country, both young and old, all of us. We cannot afford to give up now. We have to push forward and decide what future we want. A future where 3.3 million young South Africans are not unemployed. A future where young people are not only work seekers, but job creators. A future where we move and show that not half of us can be depressed in this country. A future where graduates are not sitting at home. A future where we do not have to bribe to get funding for a business idea. When I think of my generation, the generation that knew at 5 p.m. it was time to watch Dragon Ball Z, the generation that knew that after 5 p.m. you lost control of the remote because it was time for days of our lives and subsequently followed by the bold and the beautiful. The generation that watched phones evolve from green screens to iPhones. The generation that knew that missing school meant that all you could do was to watch TV commercials basically the whole day. That generation and many generations that followed after have been let down by this government. The truth is South Africa is the tension between those who are trapped by the past and those of us who want a better future. It is the tension of hope and fear. It is the tension of our experiences and the possibility of what we could achieve. It is the tension of stagnant frustration and our ability to turn up for our future. But I believe through our ability to understand that 60% of young people right now are registered to vote. And more than ever, we have the time to make our voices count. We can turn it around. This is the time we are going to talk about how over 27 years after this democracy, we are sitting with the highest unemployment rate in the entire world. This is the time we are going to talk about how three in four young people are sitting at home with nothing to do. This is the time we need to start having serious conversations about how young people in this country are seeing flames under this ANC government. It's basically dala what you must at this point if you are a young person. This is the time we talk about the young people left behind in Staxprate, in Zastron, in Wuhle Park, in Tembisa, in Meadowlands, in Bushpark Ridge, and many other places across this country. We cannot, we cannot be a generation dependent on grants for the rest of our lives. We cannot be spoken about as if we are not in the room. All we ask is for a capable state that will provide an environment for the economy to grow. A government that provides basic services like water and electricity. A government that delivers on its promises and in so doing grows the economy which creates jobs. I spent the month of April and May traveling throughout the country visiting the NYDA offices. I wanted to see firsthand the challenges faced by many young people with the services of the NYDA. I went to East London and found an NYDA office operating with just two staff members. The office was on the second floor and very hard to access for people who are differently abled. I went to Johannesburg where I found an NYDA office completely closed at 12 p.m. at midday. It was in Whitbank where I realized that if you wanted to apply for funding for your business idea or further support to grow your business, you couldn't submit an online application. You have to physically go to the, to the office. It was in Bloemfontein that I learned that if you are blind or deaf, there are absolutely no, of, no services to interpret and assist you. It was in Klagstorp where I learned that the one of two drug rehabilitation centers in the province was at risk of closing, and they only had one month left. It was in Pulugwane it became clear to me that young entrepreneurs with informal businesses had been completely left out 
in regards to relief funds because they did not have a bank statement. It was in Durban where I realized that the majority of equipment in these offices, like computers and laptops that are supposed to help young people, didn't even work. It was in Middleburg assisting Mr. Peter Kreber, whose business was hit hard by the lockdown restrictions and had had zero feedback about his application for the Youth Micro Interpreters Fund, that it was clear that the government officials don't respond to their emails. He eventually got his relief after a strongly worded email to the CEO of the NYDA. To me, it is clear that we need the DA difference, a party that gets things done. The DA's plan is already working in the Western Cape. We need it to move into the rest of South Africa, where we can create job centers throughout this country that provide information, advice, and free internet to job seekers to grow small business opportunities through increased assistance and removing blockages and red tape, to prosecute and eliminate the practice of sex for jobs and corporate interviews, including cash for jobs and corruption in allocating jobs. We want to lower data costs to make it easier for young people to connect and have access to the internet to provide bursaries to learners from low-income families, to cover comprehensive cost of study, so as to ensure that learners have the necessary tools on time to pass. We will develop and study apprenticeships, subst substantially increasing the involvement of companies to provide opportunities in new and existing fields. The task that is being required from this generation our generation is to move South Africa forward. We have no choice but to fight to fix this country. We have no choice but to keep moving forward because we definitely cannot stay still. We can only do this by voting out this pop government of the ANC and ensuring that this generation is put at the forefront. The ANC does not have the answers for this generation. And it is because of this, on the 16th and the 17th of July, I call upon all young people to register for a future we can actually imagine. Because on the 27th of October, we can make history and get the ANC out. I thank you. Young South Africans, today is not only a day for us to commemorate the youth of 1976, but today also signifies a strong call to action. The youth of South Africa need to take back their futures. 45 years ago today, a generation rose up against an oppressive government. They did not ask permission to protest the status quo. They did not ask any permission to take back their power. Our generation is no different to that of 1976. Just like them, we are facing the same battle. That is the battle against an oppressive government that continue to sideline us. They call us the generation of born frees. Yet, 75% of us remain unemployed and jobless. They call us the generation of born frees. Yet, young people continue to be failed by a broken school system. They call us the generation of born frees. Yet, we are more likely to be murdered and caught in gang crossfires than finding a decent chance at life. This, fellow South Africans, is the reality brought to us by the same people who claim to have liberated us before. They patronize us every day by reminding us to be grateful. I, like you, am tired about hearing the same old cliches. Every youth month, we are told that we are the future of this country and that the future lies in our hands. Yet our reality continue to tell a different story. 
Perhaps the time has come to liberate ourselves from them. Growing up and living in the heart of Cape Town's Cape Flats communities, I have always been conscious about my position in society and the desire to empower myself as an individual and by extension, empower my community. More often than not, you will hear people tell you that the current system of political parties is not working for us as a country. But this, I believe, is but a poor argument to deflect from the lack of participation and accountability rather than it being a systemic issue. We need to look at the facts. When other political parties were too busy focusing on renaming buildings, the DA was pushing for solutions to solve the NASFIS funding crisis. When other political parties were too busy focusing on shutting down schools during the hard lockdown, the DA was pushing for nutritional programs to continue at our schools. When other political parties were too busy focusing on bailing out a dead airline, the DA was busy creating jobs for young people where it governs, in Cape Town and the Western Cape. The proof is in the pudding. We can no longer allow ourselves to be led by empty narratives that seek to blind us. Even more so, we can no longer allow ourselves to be told that the only way we can be successful in life is if we vote for people who have the same skin color as us. The DA remains the only political party that actually offers viable solutions to the issues that young South Africans face. And we have proven it where we govern. Increasingly, it has become clear that more and more young South Africans do not know why we celebrate Youth Day. We need to change that. We need to come to the harsh realization that the solutions we seek will not simply fall from the sky. It will not come from the same government who have led us here in the first place. We must be more intentional about our existence and our participation in our country's democracy. The cost of political ignorance is too high and we are paying for that with our futures. We can no longer afford to take pride in our political ignorance. We need to realize that it is because of politics that the price of basic food items like bread and milk will continue to increase because of inflation. It is also because of politics that a great art learner in the Eastern Cape died because he was forced to use a pit toilet at a school. And it is because of politics that school leavers are struggling to find education and employment opportunities. So what am I saying? I am saying that it is politics or politics is not just about being an activist or holding a placard in a public space. Politics is about being informed. Politics is about making an effort to keep ourselves aware of what is happening around us. And when we fail to do this, when we fail to pay attention as young South Africans, we allow other people to make decisions on our behalf that will affect us for the rest of our lives. We do not have the luxury of time on our side. Simply put, we can no longer afford to not be interested in the political affairs of our country. Because once corrupt politicians are done exploiting the public purse, we will inevitably inherit a broken country and we'll be forced to deal with the aftermath thereof. And that will come at a very, very high cost. On this Youth Day, fellow young South Africans, I am encouraging every single one of you who feel disillusioned, who feel disempowered, who feel like you've you being perpetually pushed to the peripheries of our society. I want to tell you that the DA hears you, the DA sees you, and we will continue to fight for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tammy Jackson. That is no relation 
to Michael, but also thank you to Luyolo Umpiti, our day federal leader and one of the youngest members of parliament serving in the National Assembly. The following speaker wanted to be with us in Mitchell's Plain today. He has served at local government level, he has served at provincial level, as well as national level, and currently serves as the leader of the official opposition. He is the leader of the Democratic Alliance, our federal leader, John Stiernazen. Good morning, fellow citizens, and thank you for joining us today to share in our celebration of young South Africans and to talk about what we can do to offer the youth of this country more and better opportunities in life. Now, I'm sorry we're not doing this in person, but in these times we have to be cautious and we can't take any unnecessary risks. But still, we're reaching thousands of young people as this event is broadcast across the country. You, the young people of South Africa, may be the generation facing the biggest challenges right now. But as my young colleague Leola said a few minutes ago, you're also the generation with the power to actually do something about it. You have the numbers. You can make a real difference. You need to realize the power you hold in this relationship between government and the people. As long as our democracy works, and I assure you it does still work, then all the power lies with you. What you choose to do with this power will make or break the future of this country. Now, you may be watching this broadcast and wondering, what could a political party possibly still offer me that I haven't heard before? Why should I believe any of it? And I can understand why many young people have become disillusioned with politics. Year after year, politicians have been making the same promises. And year after year, these promises are broken. The situation today for young South Africans leaving school or leaving college or university seems to be more hopeless than ever before. Unemployment is at a record high. Poverty is at a record high. And crime, gangs and drugs are claiming more and more of our youth than ever before. While life gets harder for young South Africans, we see politicians living it up way beyond even their fat salaries. These are the same politicians who tell you there's no money for tertiary education, yet they're driving around in cars that cost more than a big house. These are the same politicians who tell you there's no money to put more cops on the street to keep your community safe, and they've just awarded themselves an increase in their own VIP protection. So, I understand if you've become cynical. What good has it done to listen to the promises of politicians if these promises always go nowhere? And that is a very, very good question. And here's my answer. If you're basing your expectation on the promises of politicians alone, you're using the wrong criteria. Anybody can make promises and pledges. And over the next four months leading up to the elections, you're going to hear everyone doing this because that's the easy part. That's the easy thing to do. The hard part is delivering on your word. And that's what you should be looking at. Not what does this party say, but what does this party do? If you're choosing a government, whether it's local, provincial or national, it's track record that matters far more than its promises. The DA may govern only one of the nine provinces for now, and it may govern less than 10% of the municipalities in South Africa for now, but what it does in these places puts the ANC government to shame. And let me give you some examples of this on this Youth Day. Let me tell you about a few things the DA government in the Western Cape has done to increase opportunities for young people and to give them a better start in life. Let's begin with education, which is arguably the best way a government can equip young people for the future. And under a DA government, learners in the Western Cape have a better chance of completing a quality education than anywhere else. The Western Cape has the lowest school dropout rate in the country, which means that more people stay in school until they reach their matric exams. This sets them off on a better path in life and opens far more doors for them. Some schools in the Western Cape, and specifically on the Cape Flats, are starting pilot programs for robotics and coding. 
And in Saldana Bay, there's a project underway to train high school teachers in digital technology. It's also the only province where the government continued to feed hungry school children throughout the lockdown. Everywhere else where the ANC governs, these school feeding programs were shut down and children had to go hungry. Again, always look at what a governing party does and not simply what it says. Once these learners leave school, the Western Cape government also have a num has a number of programs to give young people work experience, skills training, and a foot in that job's door. One of these programs is called the Premier Advancement of Youth Project, which gives matriculants work experience in the various departments of the provincial government through mentorship and on-the-job training. Since the PAY project was launched in 2012, almost 5,000 matriculants have benefited from this internship program. One of the biggest employers in the Western Cape is agriculture, and the provincial government runs various human capital development programs in the sector that offer young people the chance to develop skills and access work. These programs include bursaries, scholarships and internships as well as a chance to enrol in an agricultural mentorship program called the Young Professional Persons Program. The Western Cape Department of Cultural Affairs and Sport also has a program in partnership with various foundations and NGOs, which they call Year Beyond. This offers 18 to 25 year olds crucial work experience and a pathway to further studies. It also teaches young people to become active citizens and that's something we're going to need a lot more of if we want to fix South Africa. An issue that affects the youth in the Western Cape more than anywhere else is the threat of gangs and drugs. And while policing by saps might be the responsibility of national government, the DA is not prepared to simply stand by and watch as communities fall victim to a lack of visible policing. That's why the Western Cape government and the city of Cape Town launched the Law Enforcement Advancement Plan, or LEAP, at the beginning of last year. These extra boots on the ground in Mitchell's Plain have already had a huge impact in making that community safer. And the province is on track to meet its target of deploying 1,000 LEAP officers on the ground by October. The provincial government also has something called the Youth Safety Ambassador Program, which aims to place 1,000 young people at schools municipalities, NGOs and other locations around the province to serve as youth violence prevention facilitators. Now that's what it looks like when a government does less talking and more doing. But if we're talking about youth opportunities, perhaps the most important indicator of all is the employment rate. And four times a year, when these numbers are released by Stats SA, we are reminded that no other province comes close to the DA-run Western Cape when it comes to jobs. Our country is in a severe unemployment crisis, with more than 43% of working age South Africans unable to find a job, and most of them are under the age of 30. We have one of the highest youth unemployment rates in the world. But the expanded rate of unemployment in the Western Cape is a full 17.5 percentage points lower than the average for the other eight ANC-run provinces. Are we satisfied with this? No, of course not. We need to get the unemployment rate all the way down to single figures. But at least DA governments are in the fight against unemployment. ANC governments have given up this fight a long time ago. And that's what you get in the DA. A party that will fight for you every step of the way. A party that will never lose hope for the future of young people in this country. We believe the war on unemployment can be won and we know how to do it. We believe the war on poverty and hunger can be won, and we know how to do it. We believe the war against criminals, gangs and drugs can be won, and we know how to do it. We believe there can be a bright future for every young South African, and we know how to unlock it. But don't just take my word for it, because talk is cheap. Look at our track record. Compare the DA's record to that of the ANC on any issue, from service delivery to education, from job creation to community safety. Ask yourself, which of these two governments would be most likely to help you fulfill your dreams and live a full and meaningful life? Young South Africans, 
Go out on the registration weekend of the 17th and 18th of July and make sure you are correctly registered to vote in the October elections, particularly if you're a first-time voter. And then make sure you do your bit as an active young citizen of this country to choose a government that doesn't just talk about all these things, but actually gets it done. Happy Youth Day, South Africa, and thank you very much. Thank you so much to our federal leader, John Steenhuizen, as well as Timmy Jackson, our regional day leader, DA youth leader, as well as Luyolo. Thank you for joining us. I will encourage each and every one that joined in the broadcast to also share the link with other young people as we continue to strive towards a better life for everyone and not just mere promises as made by the ANC. Once again, thank you. Please mask up, sanitize, continue to be safe during this extremely difficult time, which has been exasperated due to the ANC's failures. But as young people, we commemorate today and thank you for joining. In course.